Hello everyone, it's Quick Flash. Back with a video on version 0 0.2.39. Um, this is the second time I've made this because last time I ranted too much and it went too long. But anyways, today we have some code by Tyler Corleone. Um, I've been talking to him a bit recently and he's come up with this really cool idea for battery um, compensation and basically eliminating a few, not really problems, but just making the quad fly a bit better as the voltage is constantly changing. Um, yeah, so you can read all this stuff that he says here. I'm actually just going to go into the, um, the GUI and show you the different things in here. <coughs> so, these parameters here, and th these are the new parameters added. But you'll want to mess with those parameters, your VBAT comp type, ref VBAT comp reference, VBAT throttle level, and VBAT comp PID. And you'll also want to play with VBAT low pass filter period. Those are all going to be important things when messing with this. <coughs> so essentially, what... It's Tyler, right? Let me just double check. Yeah, what... <coughs> didn't want to get that wrong. So what Tyler's code does is it compensates for your battery dying. It does that by both doing VBAT PID compensation and VBAT throttle compensation. So the throttle compensation will strive to make your throttle more or less the same throughout the flight and the PID compensation will boost the P and decrease the P a little bit throughout the flight trying to give you a more consistent, I guess, PID compensation as well. <coughs> now, not the greatest fan that we have a VBAT PID compensation and throttle compensation all working at the same time and you can't set them independent. So that's something that will be changed in the future, but for now, they're set together. <coughs> And for your VBAT comp type, you've got an off boost limiter both. Now, off obviously does nothing. You don't have any VBAT PID compensation. You don't have any VBAT throttle compensation. Boost will only boost your throttle and your PID whenever your voltage is below this value. So your VBAT comp reference is a value you set and anytime your voltage is below that it'll boost anytime it's above that it'll decrease your throttle same as your p-term um, that's if you have both set if you have boost set it'll only boost below this voltage which 37 is 3.7 volts and that's average cell voltage limit means any voltage above that will cut your throttle and both means that any voltage above that, it'll be cut a little bit. As your voltage is below that, it'll be raised a little bit. Now, you may be wondering, okay, if it's messing with my throttle, and as the battery gets lower, it's going to give me more throttle. Couldn't this give me a problem where as my voltage decreases, it increases my throttle, which by increasing the throttle, it lowers my voltage even more, and then it increases my throttle more and lowers my voltage and yada yada, and you get this loop. And yes, that can become a problem. However, there's a fix to that. Filter your voltage more heavily. In order to do that, the default VBAT LPF period was set to 35, which is a lot more voltage filtering <coughs> than before. The higher this number is, the more it will filter. Now, um, right now, the default 35, it may be increased to help with this. Um, you go too low, you will run into problems. I tested it lower. I tried, I went all the way down to 1 on the value. And let me tell you, when it was at 1, any throttle blip would kind of shoot me, not to the moon, but on my 2S whoop, it would just shoot it way higher in the air than it ever should have. Because I give it some throttle, and then it just boosts my throttle a whole lot as my voltage just starts shrinking. It's not really what you want. 
Um, I also ran into the problem where just hovering, I could hear the molders, the molders, the motors pulsating. And as they were pulsating, I could see in the OSD the voltage just going up and down and up and down. And I can tell that's exactly why the, mold, the motors were just pulsating. <coughs> so I increased this value and it got a whole lot better. Removed that issue and now with these settings it's flying really well. I'm enjoying the throttle feel throughout the whole flight. <coughs> I've set mine to both. I think I may have boosted these up to 80 or 85. Um, but all of this is in the OSD under the Rate Profile tab as well, which is really helpful for tuning. So if you do want to mess with this, you can just play with them. Um, the VBAT, this level thing is kind of just like, how strong is it? So it's more of a level. It's like, <coughs> as you increase it, it'll have a more drastic effect than a smaller value will. So if you run this, you set it to both, but you have this set to like 10, it's probably not going to do a whole lot. Um, these are the defaults. These defaults were tested on whoops, on um, both 1S and 2S. That's where they come from. So on a 5-inch quad, I don't know how well these will hold, or if they will hold, or what the levels are going to need to be. So that'll need some testing. Um, to see what those levels are, but this is really a feel thing as well, because even if this doesn't make your throttle feel exactly the same throughout the whole flight, it might make it feel better. And you may not want it to feel exactly the same throughout the whole flight, because you still want to feel some of that voltage sag towards the end of your battery. So you might run settings a little different so that you feel some sag, but not as much as normal, or, you know, whatever it is you want to do. Um... And then one thing that I really like about this <coughs> pull request is anyone who is currently running a battery that's, say, not a battery, anyone that's running a motor that's, say, 4S, but they're running a 5S battery on it and they're using the motor output limit, now you have a really nifty way of keeping your throttle feel the same throughout the flight <clears throat> because you can imagine that this limit as your voltage is higher than 3.7 volts per cell it limits your maximum throttle that means that on a full battery you won't have full power you know you'll give it a full throttle punch out on full battery it won't be as aggressive as it could be okay um, you know, that's, that's just how it is. However, if you're running a higher KV motor than the battery you're running should ever use, then you don't want access to full output on a full battery. You'd never want that. So you can help use this to give you some of that cutoff. And so you'd still want to use the motor output limit and then just maybe set it a little higher than you normally would. Just a little bit higher, not a ton, just maybe five, maybe a little bit more than 5% higher. Nothing huge. But then you can use this to limit your throttle as well. Except if you set things up right, you could essentially fly a 4S quad on a 5S battery and for the most part, do a full flight and not feel voltage sag the whole flight. <clears throat> because you've got that extra headroom to give you that extra throttle so that even as your battery's dying, because you're running a 5-cell battery on a 4S motor, you have that extra headroom to push the throttle even higher. And you can compensate for some of that. So that's one case use I see that can be really cool for this. I could see racers really liking that. Um, <clears throat> you know, just because they can get a more consistent throttle feel through the whole race. Even freestyle guys I could see enjoying it. You know, if, if I try this on my 5-inch quads and it works as well as on my 2-inch, I can see myself 
almost exclusively using this after the testing that I've done. I think it works great. Um, we do have some ideas that are in the woodworks right now as to how to make the battery voltage even better. Um, I've been talking to not fast enough and apparently um, there are ways to accurately estimate what the resting cell voltage of your battery will be after you land the quad. So while you're in the air, um, and this isn't just code where it's like, it's possible to do this, but this is what Silverware does. They've done it before, they've proved that it works, and they have the code for it. So it's not some new idea that, oh, is it going to work? Like, it's been proven before. <coughs> and it takes your battery voltage, and as it decreases, it's able to accurately determine what your resting cell voltage will be once you take the load off of your motor, off of your batteries, not your motors. <coughs> and that is really cool because you can be flying, land, and your voltage that you're seeing will be the voltage that your battery will rise to. And that's really the voltage we care more about than the instantaneous voltage. And for this feature, that might be something that'll be even more useful to stick on there. And at that point, it may be a selectable option if you want to choose the filtered voltage or the, we call it, Silver calls it compensated voltage, so it compensates for the instantaneous changes and gives you a voltage output that would, you know, tell you what the resting cell voltage of that battery should be. <coughs> so I think it's really cool that um, stuff like that's available. Um, for now, we don't have them in the code, but that is something that could be coming out in the future. Um, I think that would be really cool to see as well. So, yeah, just give this a try. Um, you know, this is really personal. It just depends on what sort of feel you want, what you're looking for. But I could see this, you know, being a really cool thing for the future. Um... Yeah, give it a go. Let me know what you think and have a good one, everyone. Thanks.